Welcome dear friends. In this video we will see how to manage a hypermature Morganian cataract and how to protect the posterior capsule at every step. This is the main incision with a 2.8 millimeter steel keratome at around 11 o'clock. And now a side port is being made on the left side of the main incision about 3 clock hours away. Now how to stain this capsule with tripan blue dye? Is it without an ebable or with an ebable? Without an ebable you can do but you have to wait for a minute. But if you inject the tripan blue dye underneath an ebable the dye is not diluted by aqueous, it sits on the anterior capsule immediately and the staining is immediate. I am injecting some dye under the iris because I see that the pupil is constricting. And my plan at this time is to use an pupil expansion device if the pupil does not dilate with adrenaline and phenocaine. Phenocaine is a combination of tropicamide, phenylephrine and gelocaine that is lignocaine. This is washing out the excess dye and now I am going to uh, inject SPMC underneath the iris and some amount above the iris. That means the anterior chamber is underfilled and some amount of SPMC is injected under the iris. A room is created for easy tucking of the BHEX ring that I am going to use. BHEX is a people expansion device invented by my friend Dr. Suvan Vattacharji of Kolkata, India. This is the device. I hold the middle tab with the BHEX forceps. This is a 23G BHEX forceps. Go inside, turn a bit and place this flange. Uh, under the side port that is it is centered at 11 o'clock then this flange is placed which is uh, the middle tab is towards 5 o'clock and then I go through the left side port and place this flange towards the 10 o'clock or 10 30 o'clock so the people has taken a beautiful hexagonal shape and this dilatation will be maintained throughout the surgery. Now I have taken a needle, punctured the anterior capsule, milky fluid comes out. In hypermature Morganian cataract, you need not do a mini excess. Let me repeat. In hypermature Morganian cataract, when the milky fluid comes out, you need not do a mini excess. Just through this puncture, you can aspirate the milky fluid. The puncture will not extend to periphery. And now the milky fluid is aspirated. The anterior chamber is nicely filled up with visco. And then the utrata forceps is used to do an optimum size rexis. My plan is to do a rexis of about 5 millimeter. I go all around 
very gently flipping the anterior capsular flap and here it is the rexis is done and this is a small tag of the anterior capsule sticking to the back of the cornea and now is the time to go into the anterior chamber with the fecal handpiece and enlarge the main wound just by 0 0.1 millimeter or 0 0.5 millimeter so that the the needle fecal needle goes easily and the wound is not stressed and now I am going to divide the nucleus into fragments we will sideways go into the substance of the nucleus hold it very firmly use Mohantas chopper the modified Sinsky hook and divide the nucleus crack the nucleus not yet divided into pieces but soon it will be divided into fragments yes by this time we have got three fragments each fragment is held with vacuum and the chopper is used to divide it into smaller pieces and now see what I am going to do one fragment is below and another fragment is above at the iris plane the fragment which is down is protecting the posterior capsule and the fragment which is above is being emulsified and this is the fragment larger fragment emulsified into pieces this fragment is being emulsified I am not going to make a rend in this case hypermature morganian cataract you need to take special precautions to not to cause a posterior capsular end and this is the best way that I am going to do the I will scaffold technique see the fragment is in the capsular bag but I am going to pull it out a little bit so that the lens gets space to go into the capsular bag and now I inject some visco enlarge the main wound little bit by one small cut maybe 0 0.05 millimeter and going to implant a hydrophobic acrylic single piece monofocal intraocular lens in the capsular bag here it goes the leading haptic goes in the capsular bag and the trailing haptic is pushed downward to send it into the capsular bag and now I place the fragment over the lens and now I go into the anterior chamber to manage this fragment I have to take care not to touch the lens I have to take care 
to be away from the cornea. So, I remain at the iris plane and emulsify this fragment. So, we must remember always that in hypermature Morganian cataract, this is maybe this may be a dictum that always use high well scaffold technique for the last fragment. And you have to know when to stop, when to stop and keep the last portion of the nucleus and emulsify that piece after implanting the intraocular lens. I have seen some colleagues implant the intraocular lens under the whole nucleus. I have also done once or twice, but we can safely emulsify half of the nucleus and then implant the intraocular lens. The BHEX has been removed by the 23G BHEX forceps. Any flange that is above the iris is held, it is pulled centrally and then we go peripherally so that all the flanges are disengaged and comes into the anterior chamber and gently we hold it and pull it out. Now is the time to uh, clean the visco. I am using the 23G Simco cannula and I have cleaned the visco partially both from the anterior chamber and from the capsular bag. And now I take the bimanual irrigation aspiration. Take the irrigation, irrigation through the main wound. I have not done a second side port. Go through the main wound. Do irrigation and aspiration together. And all the visco that is there in the anterior chamber is coming out. This is a bit of moxifloxacin. Now, the side board is nicely closed. We need not do a lot of hydration if the wound is not stressed. If you make a very small side board and if you forcefully go inside the eye, the side board becomes round and it does not tend to close even with moderate hydration. You have to hydrate a lot, almost one third of the cornea will become white to close that kind of side port. So, make the side port little bit, maybe fraction of a millimeter larger than the diameter of the instrument that you are going to introduce, so that the side port is not stressed and it can be easily closed. A final lavage has been done and here we close the case. This patient did very well. Thank you very much for your attention, hope this video will help you in managing hypermature Morganian cataracts. Remember, you not, need not do aminorexis in, case of, in cases of hypermature Morganian cataract. You just puncture the anterior capsule at the center and aspirate the milky fluid. And always, always use the eye well scaffold technique for the last base emulsification.